Political campaigns and promises have no doubt become an integral part of modern democracy. It basically allows candidates to sell their party programs and launch efforts to convince voters to support them in an election. But oftentimes, campaigns, especially in developing democracies such as Nigeria, have been increasingly viewed with skepticism and have been turned into an opportunity to tell the electorate exact opposites of what lies in the heart of the campaigner. However, there are also those who believe that a promise is a vow. Once made, must be fulfilled irrespective of the daunting situation. We have a clear vision of what we plan to do in the next four years. It is to enthrone a legacy of wealth and prosperity for all our people and communities. Our promise of prosperity for all Deltans is not a catchphrase or a campaign rhetoric. It is predicated on the fundamental premise that we will succeed as a government when our people succeed. It's a, city a good thing that the person of his come May 29 today, he is now declared as the governor of Delta State. And it's a dream come true. Okoa is a humble man. Today is a joy and a victory for Delta. With these words of hope, the oil-rich Delta State, South-South Nigeria, witnessed a new dawn as Senator Dr. Arthur Ifanyo Koa took over the leadership of the state. Four years down the line, Deltans have passed their verdicts on the government. It's not the governor that came from abroad. He's been here and he knows virtually everybody, he knows every community. We monitor the smart agenda, infrastructure, health, education, even the issue of security. And I can tell you that there is hardly any one local government or even a ward in the state today that has not felt the impact of his excellency's governance. There was no doubt that Governor Koa had been prepared for governance. Governor Koa was mindful of glaring issues he was acquainted with in the course of his electioneering campaigns around the 25 local government areas of Delta State. His vision of a new Delta, where things would work, remained on course. When we came in, we had our plans that we started with. We might not have envisaged the problems that we eventually met, but we already had a roadmap as to what we were going to do. Since Senator Dr. Okowa came on the saddle, you can see developments in all ramifications, in area of human capital development, in terms of educational facilities, medical and health-related policies, even sports development. So in all, we have done very well as a state. As a man who hates blames and complaints, the economic downturn which dealt a devastating blow on the nation coupled with the huge debt profile hanging on the state and the renewed militant activities in the creeks never deterred him from pursuing vigorously his well-articulated plans for the new Delta. Today it is a story of success. All we did was to advocate and engage critical sections of our people through constructive engagement, we can have stakeholders who listen to us. That's talking about the government, the transnational oil companies. Because we are inseparable with our people, they had cause to listen to us. And by God's grace, we're able to restore peace. He's a peace-loving governor. His attitude has reflected on the behavior of the people. And ever since he came on board, we have been enjoying relative peace in brutal local government. In his desire to touch lives, Governor Kowa's prosperity mantra came alive through strategic planning, people-centered policies, and his display of prudence in the management of scarce resources. The prudence with which is managing our lean resources to bring about unprecedented infrastructure and human capital development is unique. For me, His Excellency has done well. In the area of appointment, human capital development, Senator Dr. Ifan Okoa has done well. Okoa, popularly referred to as the youth-friendly governor, believes in the development and empowerment of young minds. It was against this background that he has transformed and raised a new generation of entrepreneurs in excess of 20,000. This paradigm shift in government's empowerment scheme has made it possible 
for the beneficiaries to establish their choice enterprises through the STEP and YAGE programs. They are the newly made entrepreneurs that this government has produced in the past three years. This is the second edition of the exhibition we have been organizing for them to showcase what they have been training and what they have been training on. Skilled personnel are scarce. So what the governor is doing, okay, we create jobs for people, enable them to acquire skills so that they will be marketable. We want to market Deltans worldwide and we are already doing that. The results are showing. The program, which is in its fourth cycle, has got its model being adopted by other states of the Federation. The just concluded second edition of the state's job creation exhibition and business fair for these new breeds of entrepreneurs are testimonies of the impacts made so far. With three years successfully completed and the fourth gradually coming to an end, Deltons have a George Governor Fanyo Koa as a prudent manager of both human and natural resources. They said he has lived up to his name, the Ekweme, which means the promise keeper. He has extended his hand to those that are not even Deltans. I've been able to train 17 youths free of charge. The governor gave me free of charge. I want to give some people free of charge. I'm from Bomani local government and now I have a business of my own. I have a spa in Lagos. I'm an employer of labor. I'm an award winner. All this is because you are a Kweme. Challenges are part of life. And I believe that when you continue to stay strong and hopeful, you are able to conquer the challenges and to move ahead. So for some of the entrepreneurs and your entrepreneurs who may not be doing as well, stay committed. Tomorrow could be your testimony time. The Delta State Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency has also been very effective in the training and development of Deltans across board to create wealth, earn a decent living and enhance diversification and business competitiveness of the state. At some point in your economy, your situation will make you look beyond what you're looking at. Now, not everybody will end up being in skills. But people that may never have been in skills because there were no jobs came into it and then discovered that this was their calling. Some of them are earning money from training people that didn't come to the center, that come to them uh, to learn. So there are so many things that have come out of this uh, vocational training center. Delta State is one of the four Niger Delta pilot states for the state employment and expenditure for results project C4. Through the state government's partnership, and prompt payment of its counterpart funding, thousands of direct and indirect employment have been secured. Added to this, over 100,000 private sector jobs have been created through programs and activities of the MDAs. The biggest component of C4 project deals with youth employment and youth skill development, which are completely your own priorities. And that is why we're really pleased that we're working closely on your agenda. And so far as component A is concerned, I think we are close to having achieved the end of project results already. The youth component has actually impacted on our people and we must appreciate you for uh, keying into our own agenda because I do know that the youth's employment and development was taking a new course. And when we came in with this suggest, uh, that we had our own program and the uh, flexibility of your program you did uh, work with us in our job creation program uh, for which uh, over 700 years were actually trained and empowered to be able to be entrepreneurs of their own. So far as of 2017, the GDP growth rate of Delta is estimated at 40.15% with 6.22% in agriculture Industrial, 68.66% and on services, 15.97%. Our GDP for 2017 is 40.15% when the whole country couldn't do 2%. So that's truly outstanding. Coming from a negative to a 40% in 2017, he deserves everything that he did. And all the awards that he has collected or has been extended to him so far is reflected in the GDP of the state.
Everybody say, Okoa, oh, we got Sam and Quay for 2019. Oh. If you want to, Oroma, for Tokoa, everybody say, Okoa, oh, we got Sam and Quay. This smart agenda, 2019 Messiah, we re-elect Tokoa. Everybody oh, want to quick for good roads, Okoa, oh, for more jobs, Okoa. Oh, Governor Kowa believes that meaningful national development lies in sound and qualitative technical education. This has brought about the shift from certificate acquisition to skills acquisition, which is the centerpiece of his reforms in the education sector. The infrastructural upgrade, refurbishing and re-equipping of the six technical schools has changed the narratives in this sector. With the full accreditation of all courses by the MBTE, enrollment has increased from what it was in 2015 to an astronomical level in 2018. We have discovered that Nigerians are not getting relevant education. And part of this job creation scheme entails that before people are empowered, they are adequately trained either by master's trainer or by the revamped technical colleges and vocational centers spread across the state. Everything he has set out to do in the course of being the governor of Delta State has been progressive. He has taken Delta State from where we were yesterday. Um, you can see a lot of transformation in technical education. He has done very well. Parents in Delta State today no longer fret over the quality of learning of their wards, especially in public schools. This is because the Ifanyo Kowa-led administration, in consonance with SDG Goal 4 and in collaboration with donor agencies, SUBURB, UBE, has upgraded facilities in primary and secondary schools, even in far-flung creeks in the heart of the riverine communities. A total of 5,667 classrooms have been renovated and constructed and still counting. Okowa has done a lot. A renovation of buildings for the primary schools, building of water projects, uh, building of toilets. He has done marvelously well. From what people are testifying, indeed we have moved to what we call stronger delta. In terms of uh, school renewal, you can see a lot of school innovations. Indeed, the one that excites us mostly is the one that has to do with the skill of our people. In addition to ensuring that academic standards are kept high, the Ifanyo Kawa-led administration has gone the whole hog to ensure the marketability of these scholars after graduation. This drive has birthed a state-of-the-art state library and the renovation of subsidiary libraries around the state. Education, he has done well. We have in my office now a state-of-the-art e-library. The governor has made prosperity for all debtors. The CBN Anchor Boroughs Program is another area that Dr. Ifanyo Kowa hit the bullseye in his wealth creation program. Government at the center has sought to adopt the model from the state and replicate it in other states of the country. The government of Okowa have won so many awards from uh, Central Bank, from world organizations in the aspect of skill of positions. And that had kept our use out of the street. They are no longer resting. Governor Kowa has explored the tremendous natural endowments of the state to boost agricultural produce, encourage the free market for raw materials and foodstuff, creating an enabling environment for commercial farming to thrive through the PPP arrangements in the upland, lowlands and the river Rhine. Today, the huge success in agriculture and agro-business sector has provided ripple advantages in security peace building and multiple job creation. First and foremost, we must thank His Excellency, Senator Dr. Ifan Yokoa, the Executive Governor of Delta State, who has uh, helped bring this vision to life. We've already employed hundreds of people who are already working on the farm. And as we progress, uh, this project is going to create thousands of direct employment 
besides the tens of thousands of indirect employment that will come out of this. New entrepreneurs have emerged in skill acquisitions, in agriculture, which is making them to have a belief once more that life must not be lived by begging. They are not their own men. So it's leadership style that has led to all these policies being implemented in Delta State has yielded a lot of dividends. Deltans have witnessed development at all facets. The administration has prioritized the development of roads, road infrastructure to interconnect the rural areas. A total of 357 road projects have been embarked on, spanning over 1,056 kilometers and 352 kilometers line drains. More than 60% of these projects have been completed. It's not even the Asaba work, it is that so many other things outside Asaba that he's been doing. And uh, especially the roads. So I'm not surprised they're calling him Roadmaster. He has done so much when it comes to road aspect of it. Because he has talked everywhere in Delta State, even riverine areas. Well, everybody wants to support him because the man is a good man. In terms of road construction, he has done so much. In terms of women empowerment, he has done so much. There are too numerous to mention. He has kept his campaign promises. He's known for the Roadmaster, our awesome miracle worker. Ekweme. The Okurukuru one of Delta State. This is the reason why we believe he should do a second term. The projects in the Riverine areas have made the people happy. They say it is the first of its kind in the history of their communities, and government has resolved to break the new frontiers and bring development to every part of the state, irrespective of location. This is the first administration that is concerned about the roads infrastructure in our riverland area so the man has done well they call him roadmaster but in the river Rhine, for us he has turned the creeks he has turned the rivers into highways you know people from different parts of the world can access us now the storm water drainage in asaba the state capital is on course the three channels from nebisi road through dla to jesus saves the Ralph Uwechwe through Ibori Golf Course to Anwai River and the DBS through Cabinet Road will all be completed by February 2019. The same vigor is also being deployed in the central axis and the south districts of the state where flooding has been a challenge. I come and see the standard of drainage this man has done. It's amazing. Where you will see gutter as deep as can swallow a car and everything connected data set is blessed with Okoa. I saw one big Five, drainage now because I know Asaba needs big drainage to be to take water out of the street Five and be something good. That one I saw myself. Governor Kawa has opened up new frontiers in the sports world and sporting activities in the state. Governor Kawa is on a mission to discover and harness untapped and hidden talents in the state. In line with that, the Stephen Keshi Stadium is one edifice to reckon with as it is a one-stop shop for all sporting competitions, both national and international games. We have started planning and there are other ones that will be coming out soon, both in football and other athletics competitions. You know we have the Delta State Sports Festival and you know we have trials. A lot of things will be going on. The place is not going to be uh, abandoned. And when I was a small boy in school in SBC Asaba, that was when that stadium was started. That's probably about 30 something years ago. But the governor came and completed it. There's a teen of joy for most of us. Look at the stadium where we are in. At least he has actually done very well for Delta State. He has always been a man that has a push. That's why they call him a queer man. The Asaba Airport today is upgraded to a Category 6 airport following the successful rehabilitation and completion of the runway to receive and dispatch large aircraft by the NCAA. The quest by the Okawa-led government to make the Asaba Airport an international gateway is on course. Benefits in developing this airport are immeasurable. They are both economic, social, technological and even prestige. We have the finest runway. We have the best terminal building. It's the best airport in Nigeria, owned by state government. The ultra-modern Central Secretariat Complex will be the first of its kind public building in the state with modern-day facilities. When completed, it will enhance coordination and synergy among various MDAs for efficiency. This is in addition to the completion of the new office complex of the head of service. 
civil servants couldn't have asked for more, as their monthly remuneration, trainings, and promotions are promptly done. He has been able to influence well on the life of workers in the states because he's a labor friendly governor, and uh, we want him to go back for a second tenure to do more for workers in this state. Since uh, he became the governor of this state, we have had a steady pain of salaries. The local government will be also some months, several months. He has paid all. And even the pensioners, in which I'm one of them, the payment has been very constant. The dire need to promote clean, safe and sustainable renewed environment has made the ministries of environment and beautification not resting on their oars to ensure that Delta State attracts more investors. He is um, a good capital uh, human developer. Even in beautifying the state, he's doing so much. And because of the way he's working, his love for development of the state and getting people off the street, other corporate organizations are actually helping to make sure that he beautifies the state. Healthy people are said to be happy people. As such, Deltans today are happy people and the smart thinking and action governor through his Health for All Deltans policy has delivered a qualitative, affordable and accessible healthcare system. One of the core areas I know he's done a very good job is in the healthcare. Uh, he's done a lot on health insurance. Uh, on a lot on uh, maternal and child health. Most certainly he's a uh, distinguished professional and uh, certainly he has won uh, the minds of the people. There's an incident that happened in, um, in Sokoro local government when a woman that came for rally delivered a baby girl in the rally floor and the governor came out and gave the new, newborn baby two million naira. Those things go to show that the governor is passionate not just about the health centre, but about the well-being of all their towns. It's a talking I do, because when he said it, every people were thinking that it's a political uh, statement. But today, the reality has come to manifestation. The universal health coverage of the state government has remained top-notch since the state blazed the trail in the country. The scheme has won awards on two occasions. This has seen the state renovating over 150 primary health centers and still counting over 485,000 registered enrollees, including widows and pregnant women and under five, now have access to effective, accessible and quality health care in the state. Impact on the pregnant women and children under five, they are properly documented now. They go to facilities and receive care and the health insurance has taken the health care service from secondary to the primary health care centers in the rural communities where the people that really need the free health care services. We are also extending the service to the rural riverine communities. He's God fearing somebody. I don't think that he came to be a governor because of money. He came to be a governor to help people, which I received many help. As old as I am, I went for eye treatment. I know how much they charge me in the hospital. It's free. Water is said to be life, and Governor Kowa has made a landmark achievement in the water resources development and its management. The Warrior Through Water Supply Scheme will soon be functional to supply water to over 20,000 households in the environs. The Asabaugeli Urban Prepaid Water Scheme is being pursued vigorously. This is without prejudice to the functional water scheme in Bomodi with over 25 water fetching islands. We have never in this part of Delta State enjoyed the dividends of democracy that we started enjoying since the AQMA, the water master. Oh my God. We are partnering seriously with the European Union, with UNICEF, with the American people, God, you said. A lot is being done by this roadmaster. These success stories of live touching programs of the governor would not be complete without an x-ray of the humanitarian work his wife, the first lady, Dame Edith Okoa, has achieved through her pet project, the O5 Initiative. The testimonies are enormous. When she goes to prisons to set the captives free, those who cannot pay their bills are supposed to release them from jail, she pays their bills. So she's done so much in support of her husband. Mrs. Okoa, she's a woman who has the needy at heart. The O5 Initiative have built sickle cell clinics all over Delta State, has done surgery for people all over Delta State. Smart Delta.
Deltans have continued to keep faith with the PDP in Delta State. They testify that Okoa is a performer. As a testimony to that, all the ethnic groups in the state have unanimously endorsed Governor Okoa for our second term in office to enable him sustain the economic growth for our stronger Delta. All is so cold, worry. All of us go to the town. Oga, I don't first tell you. That means me, I go say, I say, I stand with Okoa. If you don't say you stand with Okoa, let us see you all now. Hey, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. You know, new decision, not only in the whole Muslims in Delta State say that Okoa should come back. Governor Okoa had done meaningful work to ensure that he service the people, he please the people, he fulfill his promise of providing prosperity for all debtors. We are supporting Okoa and we should love all what he's doing. God will bless him together with him. And we're watching Okoa. Okoa election is our man. The campaign train moving around the local government areas has witnessed mammoth crowds that troop out to celebrate the winning team. They have only one message to the state, the nation and the world, which is, on Okoa agenda, we stand united. Explore the potentials of our state. Central Nigeria 